It's a pleasure to be invited and uh, please talk on this topic which uh, is simpler in theory than in practice. So the thing about guidelines is that they have to be simple because otherwise people won't read them. But they have to have sufficient detail because uh, if you skim over it, it won't be useful to you or your patient sitting in front of you. The, this is the, uh, the front of the Guidelines for Guidelines booklet, which was developed by, I think, the, um, the Guidelines group at the end of the 1990s. And it's got some very good advice about how you should uh, develop a guideline. Uh, I was overseas doing a sabbatical and on the front of their guidelines book, which it was in those days, is that they're educational, not mandatory, because in those days it was considered cookbook medicine. But the aim of the pathway is to relate it to your local context, not the British context or the American context. So it's targeted for the people uh, who are in your uh, area. I'll just give a brief uh, outline of a patient who had fairly typical um, polymyalgia, well diagnosed in general practice, um, started in celecoxib, but the CIP and the ESR were both ordered, and that's an important point I'll stress. Commenced on prednisone 10 milligrams, uh, dramatic response, no GCA symptoms, ESR fell to within normal limits and reduced by a milligram a month. Uh, also had uh, resedronate for bone protection uh, when started. That he presented a number of years later with a severe right-sided headache, uh, right-sided temporal artery tenderness, pain not only on opening his mouth or first bite, but on chewing, and that's an important point. Uh, no evidence of eye involvement. Um, very high CRP, and uh, they did an ultrasound of his temporal arteries, which was negative. And they referred him for a temporal artery biopsy, which unfortunately got lost in the system somewhere. But he responded well to the prednisone 40 milligrams daily. He also had the cotrimoxazole, which uh, prevents atypical pneumonia in people on more than 20 milligrams of prednisone. And then, uh, at the clinic follow-up when, when I first uh, met him, he was on 10 milligrams daily, but his CRP and ESR had risen, so we increased the, uh, the dose of prednisone and thought that if he doesn't respond to that, we'll use methotrexate. He wasn't keen, um, uh, and fortunately he responded, so he didn't need a temporal artery biopsy at that stage. This update, and uh, I understand you might be uh, getting copies of, of the slides, it's a very good overview, and this sort of points out the key things. It's, it's, it's proximal, uh, the stiffness there, there's good imaging for it, treatment is still prednisone, uh, but there's toxicity, so you've got to be careful. Probably driven by IL-6 for those who are cytokine aficionados, not me. So what I'm doing with this presentation, if, uh, if you're happy with this, is that all the things on your right, left, sorry, uh, are from the pathway. So I won't go through line by line. I'll just sort of pick out a few points, um, which I think uh, perhaps may be useful for you. So it says in the guideline that 50% of people you know, have peripheral arthritis, and it mentions the hands. Now, if you've got hands, I wouldn't accept that. It's based on a 1985 classification, and 7% of those patients went on to develop rheumatoid arthritis. So if you've got the hands, think something else. Now, an American uh, speaker at a conference that I was at once described classification criteria as golf sets. Goff sat as a group of old farts sitting around a table. And <laughs> as an OF myself now, you can see what it means because there's no objective criteria in, in polymyalgia rheumatica. And 
they're not necessary for diagnosis, but they're very useful. Classification is so that if you're reading a paper and your uh, patient fits in with this, then you can uh, assume that what's in the paper is going to apply to your patient. And the required uh, criteria are uh, at the bottom there. But one of the things to point out that even with these new criteria, it's very good for specificity of pain in the shoulder, uh, because pain in the shoulder normally shouldn't have a raised CRP and ESR. But against rheumatoid, it's only 61% specificity. So always keep rheumatoid in the back of your mind. And if they're seronegative, think psoriatic arthritis. Now, the conditions that mimic PMR, um, shoulder pain is very common as you get older. Uh, it can also cause weakness, so don't uh, assume that it's going to be uh, uh, myositis related to the statin that you're using. Um, but rotator cuff are found in up to 50% of people age 70 or more, often asymptomatic. Uh, the risk is that they, uh, people can always remember an injury, so they get seen by an orthopaedic surgeon on ACC, uh, whereas most of us uh, it will be asymptomatic in that, in that age group. But it's not uncommon for people with um, rotator cuff lesions to be diagnosed as um, polymyodramatic, and particularly as the prednisone comes down and they start, they're getting achy. So the investigations I've pointed out do both CRP and ESR in all inflammatory arthritis, and I've changed the inflammatory arthritis pathway recently because patients often have a normal CRP and a raised ESR. Uh, you've got to think of the other um, possibilities. Now the GGT and ALK FOS is a, a, a sign of inflammation and most inflammatory arthritis can have a, an increase in GGT and ALK FOS. The other thing I'm going to stress, and I've changed, uh, as I said, the inflammatory guidelines is, don't order an ANA unless the patient has connective tissue disorder symptoms. We, getting tired, and it's our fault because we've asked for it in the past, to get, uh, this person has back pain with an ANA of 80, and we have to sort of then send a polite response back to you. The CK may be raised for a number of reasons. Now, the management of PMR, um, as in this man that I described, is always emphasised, in fact I wrote on the letter, uh, what the symptoms of GCA are, because up to 20% of people will have it. I think with PMR, start at 15 milligrams of prednisone. Um, as I said, it used to be 10 to 15. Now the guidelines overseas are saying 12.5 to 25. But any form of arthritis will respond to 25. And the, uh, the adverse events are much higher. And also consider the use of bisphosphonates because you lose your bone density in the first three months. Whoops. Um, now, lower the prednisone as sort of outlined in, in the pathways. Always ask about uh, GCA. Um, now, it can take two to five years before uh, you can get off the prednisone. And this is just from a paper suggesting how many people are still on prednisone. And if you don't respond, uh, you can use methotrexate. And some of these people will have an overlap with, um, with RA. Uh, the other thing is I would do blood tests for CRP and ESR before every drop in, um, in the dose. The other thing is <coughs> you can't predict how quickly you'll be able to come off, so uh, often we'll do it monthly, but if you get to a stage and they're not getting better and the CRP's uh, going up, then go back to the previous dose and reduce it perhaps at three monthly or two monthly. Um, now, giant cell arteritis, um, about 20% of people with PMR will have giant cell arteritis. And, and the key thing here is that uh, uh, it can also involve the aorta and the large arteries. And I've mentioned some of the, the red flags there. You know more about the other diagnoses than I do, and so in the interest of time, I won't do anything about that. CRP and ESR, very predictable. And the management, um, if it's got visual symptoms, 
off to the ophthalmologist. They'll do a temporal artery biopsy. If it hasn't, go to the rheumatologist. We will order an ultrasound and, uh, if necessary, a temporal artery biopsy. The changes on ultrasound, uh, you have uh, one week to get the ultrasound done, four weeks for temporal artery biopsy. Now, in my last 15 seconds, uh, since I've got such a large audience, I'm going to ask you all not to prescribe allopurinol for acute gout. The evidence is totally shoddy. The abstracts all say you can do it, and we're getting lots of patients whose gout is being prolonged and who are ending up in hospital because of that philosophy. Thank you very much. <laughs>